Perhaps you have an interest in the Macintosh Classic, or perhaps uh, you are going to buy one off Craigslist, or maybe you've already bought one. And either the seller reports, or you've discovered, that the unit, as soon as you turn it on, it has a chessboard on the display. And that's it. It does nothing else. So you're either looking at playing checkers on the screen 24-7, or a game of chess. Well, the reason you're having this problem is very simple, and it's a very simple fix. In fact, if you can use a screwdriver and dishwashing detergent, I'll show you how to fix it. Now, I'll preface that by saying that the fix is not permanent. It is only temporary, and I'll show you how to fix that permanently, if you so desire, and if you have the electrical or electronics aptitude. But first, here's what you're going to need. You're going to need a towel or a t-shirt or something to set the unit on. And you're also going to need a Torx screwdriver. The Torx bit is a T15, and you're going to need some kind of an extension to get it down into the cabinet. In this case, uh, about six inches will do. And I found this cobalt uh, extension at Lowe's, and I have two of them stuck together. Okay? So let me show you where the screws are that you're going to need to be removing on your unit. Alright, there's two at the top, two screws at the top, alright, underneath the handle, and then there's two down here at the base. Alright, so once you remove those four screws, then you will lift up on the cabinet and pull the back cover off. Alright. Just a, a couple of things here. First of all, this unit here must have been kept in a tent all its life. Look at the rust. I mean, that is just pathetic. Uh, this one I was not able to fix using this method. But I have another one in the other room that I also got off Craigslist that was in mint condition. Other than this checkerboard chess problem that, uh, that we're going to address here. Just a couple of things here. There's your picture tube inside the unit. We also have uh, the hard drive there and then this circuitry over here this is the guts for the monitor this is the part that it is telling you with uh, much exclamation there do not touch this area all right so you have high voltage in that that could be high voltage even with it unplugged and turned off okay so just avoid touching anything in this area here all right but you'll be completely safe touching this area here okay notice i'm touching it and i'm still alive you have some uh, some cables that you're going to need to disconnect from the main board before we pull it out. All right. There is this uh, memory exp expansion module here that comes off. So you're going to pull that off first. Okay. And let's see. I'm having a little bit of trouble doing so with one hand. There we go. All right. So that comes off. Set that aside. And then you're going to have your uh, SCSI hard drive cable here. It pulls off. Okay, you can see it's it's connected to the main board here. So just pull straight up on that. And you might have to wiggle it back and forth to get it off of there. I'll tell you, this is not my day here. All right, and then you've got another uh, floppy disk cable that you're going to remove. That comes off. And then this uh, power cable here is the third interface, and there's a little, uh, like a rocker thingy up here at the top. You're going to push on the top. It'll release it, and then you can pull it straight off. And the motherboard is not going to fall in the floor in your case, all right? As you can see, look at the rust. I mean, wow, that is insane. In your case, your main board is just going to slide out off of these uh, little rails here on the side. So just pull the motherboard straight out. All right, let me show you what the problem is in question here. Fix focus. We have four capacitors that are on the board here. We have another four capacitors on the main board over here. All right, these are what's causing your checkerboard problem. The reason is they leak and they have some kind of liquid inside them 
that leaks out of these and spreads itself, uh, or itself all over the board right here. This one has already been cleaned. And uh, it's also been trashed by the amount of rust that was inside the unit, so this is definitely an exception. But uh, what we are going to do is take some standard laundry detergent, not laundry, uh, dish detergent, all right, like Dawn or some other kind of dish detergent, and take it and spread it out. Just, you know, pour a small amount on the board here. All right, so just kind of pour some across here pour some across here then take your toothbrush and very gently brush this area all right so it kind of foams up and is all nice and sudsy same thing here there is a, a little tiny circuit that sits right behind here it's a little uh, crystal of some sort but it's a little uh, tube looking thing and I wasn't careful and I knocked mine off all right so be very careful when you're brushing around these two capacitors here that you don't knock this particular circuit off the uh, board. If you do, uh, it's toast. Well, or at least you'll have to repair it. All right, so your only other option other than cleaning this board off of here is to replace these capacitors. Find out their value and order some capacitors and replace them. Now, this is again and only a temporary fix because from what I read online, they will leak again and this problem will return at some point and perhaps you could clean it again. Um, I'll find that out on my own as well, because like I said, I ordered or, or bought two of these units and this particular method worked on the second one. So again, clean these off, rinse it off with uh, some warm water, not hot water, but warm water. And once you're sure it's completely uh, clean and, and rinsed off, take the board and set it, prop it up somewhere and then get you a portable fan and point that fan at the board, you know, like a little desk fan of some sort, have it blowing directly on the board and let it dry overnight. The next day, uh, you might want to might want to give it 24 hours. So I'll, let's say the next evening after it's had 24 hours of drying, go ahead and put the circuit board back in the machine, put your cables back on, the ones that we took off, you'll see the three there on the screen, Put those back on, turn it on, you'll have a Mac running again. It really does work, and um, again, there's a scientific reason behind it, and it's because whatever comes out of those capacitors there shorts out the board, actually causes an electrical circuit across some of these other circuits in here, and uh, prevents your computer from booting up properly. So anyway, while you're in the machine, you may notice a bunch of dirt on this uh, little filter right here. Get you a vacuum cleaner out, vacuum all this stuff out, so that way it's got plenty of airflow on the inside. And uh, make sure that fan is running when you turn the unit on. And like in my case, this hard drive here sounds like an old refrigerator when it's running. Yours will probably do the same, but don't be alarmed. Uh, it's it's actually just due to age that it's so loud, but as long as it works, you're good to go. Hope you enjoyed this video and good luck with your project. Again, do all of this with the power disconnected, and um, be sure to give your motherboard plenty of time to dry before you put it back in. Have a great day, and let me know how this uh, works out for you. Leave a comment saying, "Hey, this worked out. It did. It, it fixed it." Or, uh, you know, you're crazy. It didn't work. Either way, I'll take your comment. Thanks for watching, and uh, be sure to check out my other videos as well.